This is an Intel compute stick. It's a tiny, terrible computer from 2015 that you shove directly into an HDMI port. Was this a good idea? Did it deserve to be discontinued? And more importantly, can we run any semblance of modern Linux on this thing? Well, today we're gonna find out, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy bite-sized e-waste, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. The mid-2010s were a time of wild experimentation, at least in the realm of computing devices that you can shove into an HDMI port. The first gen Google Chromecast came out in 2013, Amazon released the Fire Stick in 2014, and these so-called stick PC devices started to gain in popularity. The MegoPad T01 was the first to have an x86 CPU in 2014 with its 64-bit Intel Atom Z3735F. In 2015, Intel released this, its own compute stick, also based on that same Intel Atom CPU. It came with either Windows 8.1 or Ubuntu Linux 1404 Trusty, one or two gigs of RAM, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, it even has an adorable little fan. I bought the Windows version brand new, mine actually came with Windows 10, and I used mine, like many people, as a media center PC, plugged directly into my TV to watch legally obtained video content. But then we got a Chromecast, and this compute stick wound up unceremoniously retired to the bottom of a drawer. At least until today, when it shall live once again. But first, I want to take this thing apart and see what this adorably tiny e-waste actually looks like on the inside. E-Waste Connoisseur shirt now available on shop.actionretro.com. To the workbench. Oh man, when was the last time we actually used the workbench? I beg your finest pardon. I need this chair. Oh yeah. So I'm thinking I need to use some magnification to look at what's in this thing. So I've got my cool magnifier on a stick and if needed, my actual digital microscope. Thanks to Bruce from Branca's Creations for pointing me in this direction. Oh, I see you're admiring my chair. Today we'll be abusing the Intel compute stick from the comfort and ease of the Sihu Doro S100 ergonomic office chair. Today's sponsor. If you're looking for a good value chair, hear me out on this one. Whether you're working, gaming, or abusing old and underpowered e-waste, sitting properly and comfortably is important. With self-adaptive lumbar support, a 3D mechanical headrest, and 4D coordinated armrests, the Sihu Doro S100 keeps me well supported for hours long sessions of computer shenanigans. Just look at this fancy dual dynamic lumbar support. My Jeep XJ doesn't even have suspension this good. It's completely unique to this chair. This dual setup feels amazing, supporting my back even when sitting at the workbench for hours. And it's designed to support users of all different sizes. I mean, I'm a hair over six foot and the adjustments on this by far support me better than any office chair I've ever used. Specifically, I love how the seat back comes up to serve as your head support. The 4D coordinated armrests move to support my arms in all positions, whether I'm typing or holding up my Steam Deck. This handy feature really helps relieve strain. Get it? Handy? And I haven't even mentioned the price. The Sihu Doro S100 is just $279.99 as of this filming. There's a one year free return policy, lifetime warranty, and you can use the discount code YT6OFF for a 6% discount. That is an incredible value for all of the features packed into this chair. Check out the Sihu Doro S100. Links down in my description below. All right, we have one screw at the top here. The only visible screw. Here is our tiny fan, look at that. Extremely tiny connector for the fan. We've got a battery stuck in here. Let's see if we can't pull the whole guts out. Let's get this heat sink out of here. Oh, there we go. Well, it's Intel branded Wi-Fi, big surprise. According to the internet, that's dual band wireless. A lot of the board is hidden under this metal shield here. I think it's just clipped in. Yeah, we have two Kingston one gigabyte memory chips. 
And over here is our eMMC storage, which is, oh, that's kind of impossible to read. SanDisk, 32 gigabytes. You know, we might be the first people in recorded history to repaste an Intel compute stick. I don't say we never innovate anything on this channel. Can't innovate anymore, my ass. And in accordance with our normal jank procedures, we'll be using a PlayStation 2 USB keyboard, the hamster mouse, and I'm going to use this little USB hub since we only have two USB ports on the Intel compute stick. This mini USB is actually power. We'll save the USB 3 port for something more special. And we'll connect our input peripherals to this hub. And then for power, I'm going to run it off of this power brick so we can see how much power the compute stick is actually pulling. Annoyingly, the power button for the compute stick is on the side here, so good luck pressing that if you have this installed on your TV. All right, powering up the jank, it's drawing about 2 watts, 1.2, 1.8. Oh, it's booting! Good, we didn't ruin it. I mean, as much as you can ruin what is essentially a netbook without the book part. Oh god, what was my Windows 10 password from a decade ago? <laughs> Certainly not action, like I make everything today. Did I just tell you that? Ah, we're in! Oh yeah, there used to be a remote keyboard app you could install. Yeah, you used to download it onto your phone so you could control the keyboard and mouse from the couch, but it does not seem to exist anymore. Big surprise. Anyway, we have VLC player, Steam, Skype, RIP, and some PC optimizers, because the last time I used this compute stick, I was trying to use Steam in-home streaming to stream modded Skyrim to the compute stick to play it on the TV. Actually, to some success. Of course, we're not going to keep Windows 10 on this thing. What kind of channel do you think this is? First thing we're going to try, of course, is Haiku. All right, booting the latest Haiku Nightly. And in fact, this is the whole reason I pulled out this compute stick in the first place. I'm really curious how Haiku runs on it because technically it's kind of in the sweet spot of what Haiku supports. This might actually run great. And oh my God, Wi-Fi works. Are we really on the internet? We sure are, look at that. All right, we are gonna install. And it does not see the eMMC storage. Ah, oh, son of a gun. All right, reboot it into BIOS and it's actually a pretty fancy BIOS. Look at this, we've got a mouse and everything. Secure boot is disabled. All right, plan B. Let's install a micro SD card in here because this has a micro SD card slot. We'll boot Haiku back into the live environment and see if it sees it. It does not. Now, that's really a shame because Haiku runs so freaking well on this thing. I mean, I guess we could just run this off of a USB stick. Ah, check it out, Haiku literally thinks this is a laptop. Damaged or missing battery. All right, well, it's a shame we can't install Haiku to the eMMC or even the SD card. Let's see how the latest version of Ubuntu fares. And this is full fat Ubuntu with GNOME and everything. I really like how Ubuntu's splash screen puts the Ubuntu logo beneath the computer maker's logo. All right, well, it took about 12 minutes to boot into the live desktop and immediately showed something went wrong. Oh, also, there's no response from the mouse. Uh, Plan C, my all-time favorite lightweight Linux distribution, MX Linux. I mean, we've gotten usable MX Linux installs on even a Pentium 4. Granted, that was the 32-bit version and Fluxbox. Here we're installing the 64-bit version with XFCE. Desktop is responsive, Wi-Fi works. MX Linux is so freaking good. Let's just do a straight up full install right off the bat. Oh uh, yeah, MX Linux sees the internal storage just fine. It is installing. Hopefully jump cut to this is complete. Yeah, here we are in our fresh install of MX Linux, the distro that will run on literally anything and usually run well. We definitely have to get our obligatory NeoFetch screenshot. Look how smooth this is. Can you believe this is an Intel Atom? 
What fetch do we have on here? Fast fetch. According to Fast Fetch, we have our Z8330 Intel Atom, Intel Integrated Graphics, 1.85 wonderful gigs of memory, of which we are already at 57%, and a gig of swap. Firefox comes included with MX Linux. Dare we try YouTube? <laughs> Action Retro. Oh yeah, it works! That doubles in size? Oh my god, it works well. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess this is now an ad for MX Linux. Oh my god, even full screen HD video. That is honestly shockingly good for this level of hardware this old. And since MX Linux has access to Debian repositories. We should just be able to install Steam. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Steam installed just fine. Oh man, we're really gonna put this Intel Atom to the test. Now we've already used up 37% of our hard drive, so uh, let's choose carefully here. Well, the long dark is relatively small, 12.36 gigabytes. Plus it's a Linux native version, so why not? All right, the long dark is installed. We have hilariously used up 83% of our internal storage. Will the game even attempt to launch in these quite limited circumstances? Oh my God, it is really launching the game. <laughs> All right, so far, shockingly good. Well, unfortunately, it's been sitting at the loading screen for like 15 minutes. I think she froze. Oh yeah, but check this out. Steam in-home streaming works. I'm streaming to the compute stick from my Steam Deck. But this is actually kind of an excellent use case for this. I could plug this into my TV and stream from my gaming PC and it actually just freaking works. Look at this. MX Linux and an ancient compute stick not too shabby. What did you say to me? What did you say to me? I've had enough of your guff. Stop right, stop right there, criminal scum. So, Intel Compute Stick plus MX Linux. A shockingly good combination. And I think you really have to give a lot of props to the MX Linux team for making such a streamlined, lightweight, yet user-friendly and full-featured operating system. It's kind of crazy good. And I think I might actually try to use this thing again, plugged into the back of my basement TV, to stream video games to. I mean, it was pretty good. And also, I hope today's video has helped to illustrate that really, you can have a lot of fun with even the worst, jankiest, lowest powered e-waste. I mean, how many of these things have been chucked in the garbage and how much fun do we just have with it? So I guess what I'm saying is rescue broken computers and just have fun. In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more weird stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.